Hello, my name is Nicole, and thank you so much for taking this time out to listen. Today, I am talking about moral dilemmas, moral dilemmas, and I'm going to just give you some examples as well as some guidance, uh, especially to those of you all who are younger listening. We're talking about 20 plus or 20 uh, going the other way, 19, 18, 17. Moral dilemmas. As you're walking with the Lord, you're going to come across those times where you're not going to quite know what to do, how to react. Uh, you're going to at times even find that your spiritual walk with Christ is not as good as you might think. OK. New believers are very zealous at first when they're walking with the Lord. They want to tell everybody about God. They want folks to start coming to the church. They want people to start reading. But they can be so zealous to the point that they forget, though, about that man that they're living with. (laughs) They can be so zealous that they forget about that woman that they're living with. They can be so zealous that they forget about that drug habit that they still have or the alcohol issue or I like to visit the club type of stuff that's still lingering in the background. So what happens is, is that when they get out there and they start promoting everything, right? But yet they still got all these monkeys on their back. People might be sold out for a little bit and then they begin to fall off because they start seeing folks for who they truly are. They start to get a little bit closer to those areas that are unfinished, that are still work, works in progress, okay? We're always going to be a work in progress, but some things we just need to let go right away, okay? We already know what the scripture says, what have you, but we start justifying some things, right? So there was a time where I was in that moral dilemma, where I knew that there were some things that were just right. I just had to do, but I wasn't ready to face them. So when advisors came to me and said, listen, the the decision that you're about to make, that's not righteous. That's not good. Okay. And it's actually going to cause some problems for you. I didn't want to listen. It was okay to talk about this and that and everything else because I had that under control, but other subjects, mm, not so much. Case in point, having a boyfriend, okay? Years ago, not just having a boyfriend, but then later on, having another boyfriend and another, okay? You cannot tell the little girl what she should be doing when you don't even have your stuff together, right? You can't tell that little boy, I want you to grow up and not be like your daddy, When you keep bringing people around him that act just like his daddy, you see? So people are going to watch you. And then some might go ahead and do some things, but then fall off because they see that you still don't have it together. As much as you say, listen, just don't do it. I mean, ignore me. I mean, because I'm all messed up. I'm flawed and stuff, but just don't do it. And some people go right ahead and they do it anyway. The son ends up doing what his father did. But I told him, told him it's not good enough. Were you walking the walk? Right? So you're in this moral dilemma within because you know that you got some stuff that's still sitting there and you're hoping and praying that certain people don't find out, but then they find out. Now you got to face the reality or for some people, they start distancing themselves because they're so ashamed. You know, they fall from grace. I can't believe, I can't believe I got caught. I can't believe that this happened. I I mean, oh my goodness, you know, I was doing so well. Yeah, you were, but now you fell from grace. Okay. So when this sort of thing happens, you get angry at times and then you want to justify some things when people point it out. And some folks are going to tell you, cut the BS. I don't want to hear it. You know, you're wrong. So-called Christian, you're a hypocrite. You're a pretender. You're trying to tell me not to drink, but every time I turn around, I see you on Sunday and you at the bar. You trying to tell me, okay, not to sleep with this one and that one, but then don't you have a woman, maybe two or three other women, right? 
that you call your so-called sisters or friends, but we know otherwise. So it's hard to receive a word from someone if every time I turn around, I keep seeing some foolishness around them. And then they're telling me that I need to get my act together. I need to do what's right. Okay. The Christian is faced with a lot, a lot. So you got these moral dilemmas that show up. And then here's what happens. I'm going to use cohabitation as an example. Now, you may not have been one that agrees with that sort of thing. Okay. And you may never have done it. But then there are those that have. And so you might be able to speak to it because, hey, you never did it. So you're trying to encourage other people why it might be a good idea not to do it. OK, but if you haven't been in that situation, your conversation is only go, going to go. But so far before somebody's going to say, OK, you never experienced it. So you need to move on because I'm in a situation right now. And then they go head on and they start talking and then you still can't really identify with it. But let's say that you have been in a situation like that, but you got yourself out. Now you are an authority on that because you know how to talk to folks in such a way to give them the information that's going to free them up out of the situation. That is, of course, if they're willing, because a lot of times people are not willing to leave. OK, uh, a situation that they don't have to do anything more than show up for. Don't have to wear a ring. Don't have to say to anybody that they're committed. Um, you know, other than the person that they're with, but they can still go out here and say they're single. They can still write it on a paper. Okay. They don't have to do too much of anything because, well, we're not married. And then I'm not in a God like that. And I don't have to read his word and I don't have to buy by his word. That's your thing, Christian. Okay. But if their heart is willing and they want to see themselves up out of a situation because they want to come up higher spiritually and so forth, then yes, we have to advise that you leave that situation. That's what was done to me years ago. And I had to make a serious decision. That moral dilemma. Okay. What's right over what's wrong. And of course, you choose what's right. And what's right is, is that you get married and you make sure that you take care of your business and you do what needs to be done. Now, if you are at war with that, if you're at conflict with that, eventually that cohabitation, that relationship, what have you, is going to take a serious hit. If you're trying to be a Christian while you're cohabitating or having sex, maybe you're not living with anybody, but you're just having sex with different people. At some point, your personal relationship with Christ is going to be affected and you're not going to perform like you used to. I know I'm stepping on somebody's toes. You're not going to perform like you used to. And your partner is going to start to notice something different about you. You're not into me. You're, you don't want me anymore. That's not it. But, but come on now, what's wrong with you all before you were okay with it. Yeah. Because they're having some moral issues with it now. Because they're starting to go to the church or they're starting to read the word or they're starting to pray or they're starting to be around some quality individuals who's advising them. Listen, you need to marry her. You two need to separate for a while. You need to see whether or not she really is somebody who you want to marry. Maybe that's why you keep prolonging it. Maybe that's why you really don't want to do it because you're not sold out on being married to her. So that's going to be an issue. So these moral dilemmas show up, the moral dilemma of you were stealing, right? And then you decided you didn't want to steal anymore. But then you got people around you that say, hey, you know what? What's up? What's up? And then they end up doing it. And then when they do it and then you fall into that uh, uh, state of mind again. Now that you've done that sort of thing, it becomes an issue. Now you're saying, oh, I can't believe it. I mean, man, what's up? What's up? You know, I, I, I fell. I fell in that trap again. And those that are just as guilty as you, you think they're going to encourage you not to be in that trap. They're going to say, man, it's all right. It's OK. Moral dilemmas. Maybe, you know, someone that's faced with something like this and they want to do what's right. Oh, I want to do what's right because, you know, well. It's just the right thing to do. But then they keep doing all this stuff that's wrong while they're talking about praise the Lord and hallelujah. They're a hypocrite. They're a pretender. They're not going to want to hear that, but that's what they are. 
Because if you can pretend that you're righteous on Sunday, but then continue to do all sorts of negativity all through the week, all sorts of ugliness, then you're not ready to walk with Christ. And it's better to just say, you know what? I'm not ready. I'm not ready for the church. I'm not ready for the Bible. I'm not ready for any of this right now. Then to lead people into believing that you got it going on when you really don't. And these folks that you know that are like this, that's why they constantly are going through some type of trial because they're talking out of two sides of their mouth. Today, I'm for Christ. Tomorrow, I'm not. Today, I love Jesus and tomorrow, I don't. You love Jesus as long as he's blessing you, right? You know some folks like this. And then nah, they don't love Jesus so much the next day because, well, Jesus is uh, putting them under some trials, under some fires. So moral dilemmas are all around and you get some folks that they want so bad to do what's right, but they got all the wrong people around them. And to that, we say, cut them off. You don't encourage folks to continue to be around people and do devilish things. The best thing for a person who is struggling with sexual promiscuity is to stop putting themselves in a position where they're going to be sexual. Well, oh, you know, it's easier said than done. No, it's not. You just don't put yourself in a position where you could get yourself into some hot water. Meaning you don't be alone with the opposite sex because you can't trust yourself. You're always out in the open. Do you want to come back to my place? Mm-mm-mm. <laughs> nope. Do you want to hang out with me? Is it in a public atmosphere? Yeah, everybody's going to be around. Okay. But afterward, let's go back to my place. No. And they might set it up where they start pouring a bunch of drinks. Now, are you going to go back with them? You see? And some folks say, well, I got this. And, you know, God's with me. And. No, he's not with you if you're going to go ahead on down a pathway that he specifically told you not to be on because he knows what you're going to end up doing once again. Someone dealing with all sorts of substance addictions and so forth, it would make sense not to go where the substances are, right? But to go where the help is. I can do this. I can fight it all by myself. The one who was caught up on in all sorts of drug activity and so forth he told us at the church he said he knew he couldn't fight it all by himself and he finally just went on and got the help he got tired of putting all the stress and dramas and so forth on all those people around him his loved ones his friends and so forth he finally got the help that's what it takes I mean you can walk this walk in so many different ways Simply by giving up some things. The things that keep causing you to sin. The Lord says cut them off. You're tired of lying. Tired of just keeping up some drama with some folks. Stop getting on the phone talking to everybody. Stop going to everybody's house. Stop expecting folks to call you and pray and please, please. When you know you cannot get it together when it comes to drama and gossip and lying and getting mixed up in petty stuff. Some folks need to take a fast. They need to take a fast from people a long time ago. Some folks need to take a spiritual fast, a food fast, a, you know, a liquid fast. Because their bodies need some cleansing as a result of all of the things that they have put inside their bodies and allowed uh, folks to put in their bodies without being too specific. You've got to rid yourself of those spirits that linger, that linger. After a drug binge or alcohol binge or what have you. You've got to do what it takes. If you're going to walk this walk. And you've got to be clean as much as possible. And when I say clean. I mean clean of the foolishness. Of the uh, nastiness. Of the unrighteousness. Of the sinful behavior. We're all going to battle. But some stuff we can really work on. To remove so that we can be better uh, witnesses for Christ. So I take this moment right now to pray for those of you all who are 
still struggling with all sorts of sin while you're talking about Lord and Jesus and God. I pray in Jesus name that you will no longer be a hypocrite, that you will no longer hide the foolishness and that you will start speaking, speaking the truth about yourself and doing what is right. That you will get the necessary help that you need. That you will no longer be in a closet or under a bed or hiding from God like Adam and Eve did in the garden. God sees and God knows and I just pray that his mercy will be upon you. And that you will have the strength to knock whatever addiction, whatever you have hidden in secret, that you'll be able to. To rise above it and be victorious in Jesus name. Thank you as always for listening. Please do check the description box for anything that might be beneficial to you. You have been listening to YouTube channel NM Enterprise 7. If you haven't subscribed, please do. If you haven't donated, please do. We are continuing to market this channel. And those who have been so kind to give, praise God for you. May his blessings continue to be upon you. And for those who are wrestling with it, well, I'm here to tell you there's no need to wrestle because God is continuing to bless me as well as those around me. Well, thank you so much as always for taking the time out to listen. God bless.